Hi, Mark. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and what it is that you do on Amazon? Sure. So I do marketing and SEO specifically for Amazon sellers. Uh, I started off working under a nine-figure seller. He sells nine figures annually, uh, top 500 company on Amazon. So that's where I started. That's where he trained me. That's where I got, you know, the sense of this business. And um, that was around like five years ago. So ever since then till now, I started my own, you know, marketing firm and helping people get to the next level on Amazon. And do you service uh, sellers from all around the world or only in the United States? Yeah, all around the world, mainly the United States, but people who are around the world, the main, you know, the gold mine is, is USA. So, yeah. Awesome. I like your hat, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's what I stand for. That's like my branding. You know, I'm Jewish. So <laughs> I wear my yarmulke anyway. So I, you know, I put the logo there. People know I'm, I'm like the Amazon dude. Amazing. Amazing. And I mean, for people who are new to the Amazon game, could you just briefly explain why SEO is important? Right. How are you going to be found? Very simple. Like, it, it, you know, there's hundreds of people, maybe even thousands of people who are selling the same or similar product, right? Like you, right? So if I'm going to search up a product, you need to be there. How else are you going to be there without SEO? Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I think that a lot of people uh, focus on PPC advertising and paid metrics before they get the fundamentals right. But uh, I mean, as you said, if you get the fundamentals right, the listing optimization, the SEO, the keywords, maybe you don't, won't even need uh, advertising at all because you'll be selling just based off those keywords, right? Yeah, exactly. PPC is great. It's a, you know great uh, to give you a boost and heads up, but I always view it as a you know as a, as a crutch. Uh, what you want to do is you want to be there organically. So what we do is we help you be there organically, but you, that you be found, so you don't need to spend any money on your PPC. That's our ultimate goal. But PPC definitely is helpful, sure. Right. And I mean, what's the process? What does the process look like when, if I'm a seller and I come to you and I, and I tell you, like, I have this idea for a product, I'm going to be selling glass on Amazon. Uh, what questions are you going to ask me initially? So firstly, we would ask like, you know, if you have your product, if you found your manufacturer and whatnot, where we would jump in is once you found your product and you're already sourcing it with us. So what we do is we make the listing for you. We have a graphic designing team, you have a copyright team and all that kind of stuff. So we'll help you get your listing on Amazon. So I always say there's two, two, you know, kind of two phases on getting a listing up on Amazon. So one is having actual listing, like the infographics, the, all that kind of stuff, the graphics, the, the, the content of the actual uh, listing. And then there's phase two, which is launching it. So, you know, we, we kind of split it up into two parts. It's very important. Right, right. And you mentioned that uh, there, there are certain parts that go into a listing, right? The photography, the headline. Could you just briefly describe what goes into a successful listing and uh, maybe in descending order of importance? Definitely. So a lot of people just go like, oh, I'm going to hire a copywriter. You know, if it sounds good, it's good. But realistically, Amazon is its own world, you know? So right. it's, it's not just putting up a covering that, that's, that sounds good. You need to have something that has optimized keywords in there because Amazon, that's how they find relevancy between your product and keywords. So you want to make sure your title, your bullet points, your description. Oh, yeah. So a lot of people, you know, they think that you could just hire a copywriter. If it sounds good, it's good. But realistically, Amazon is a whole, it's a whole world in itself. Uh, every little word counts because that's how Amazon shows relevancy. So you need to make sure you have all the target keywords in there, whether in the front end or the back end of your listing. So the title, bullet point, description. Um, and majority of the people don't even read your description. Unless someone's very, very detailed, people into infographics are very visual. They want to see right away. So that's why infographics is very, is, infographics is very important. Um, and mainly not just hiring a copywriter because it sounds good. You're going to make it sound awesome. Make sure you have all those good keywords in there so you're ranking. Right. And uh, it, it seems to me that uh, it's actually, you said that Amazon is a whole uh, different world. There are actually two worlds inside of it because uh, one thing is you have this page, you have the page one and you're scrolling through and you have the little snippets, you have the little photo, the little headline, and that's basically all you have. But once you dive in the product listing, there's a whole uh, different uh, list of information that you have to take care of. How are these uh, two micro worlds different from each other? And what do you have to have in place in one or the other? Definitely. So I, like, it, it's a very underrated thing, uh, but it's very important because look, you have to first get someone's attention so they're going right. to click on your listing. That's A. And just doing that alone is, is a lot, or else you're not going to get any clicks. So that's step one, which I would highly suggest having a great image that stands out. I was actually just reading something, um, of, of like a, not, not like a research I kind of put together to see which images work better. And just putting it on an angle or just putting it on, on like straightforward, the conversions were like worlds apart, literally. So in your, you need to have your, and a lot of people use their brand name <clears throat> like in the title. 
as a first word, but no, because not everyone knows you as a brand name yet. Uh, like Clorox could put Clorox, you know, a brand name could, but if you're a private label, you don't use up that space. We have very limited real estate space over there. So don't use that to put your brand name. Rather, put what the product is that it can send it like they read it. Okay, it's a water bottle. And then you can write all your details on that at the end. Because anyways, your, your brand name is going to be there. So that's step A, having a great image, making sure you don't, you know, take up space that's not needed. Once you get onto the listing, then that's good. But you still need to sell them. So infographics are very, very important. I have people who are willing to invest on infographics and graphics more than they would even on the product itself sometimes, you know? Because it's so important. It's not like you're in a store where you're displaying your product, you see it, you can feel it. You gotta need to sell them through those infographics because they don't have it in their hand. Right, so uh, when you're basically winning the click, you have to make sure that your photo is uh, to the point and don't uh, put your brand name if it's not famous. And once you want to win the sale, you have to make sure that you have all the details, the bullet points, the description, and the infographics, as you mentioned. And I like that you mentioned uh, the point about the brand because it seems to me that very few sellers reach their business to the point where they reap the benefits of a brand. So a lot of businesses invest in branding, invest in their name, their trademark, and all these things are of course important. But very few sellers really get to the point of scale, of scalability where uh, you actually get the benefits. You're not Kleenex or something, right? So yeah, I mean, you have to sell the product first, gain that credibility, reputation, and then as you said, uh, do everything else. But um, I mean, let's say that it, I'm not a beginning seller. I'm an experienced seller, right? And uh, you and you mentioned that you work with sellers who sell nine figures. Uh, and uh, I haven't been paying much attention to my listings. I just wrote some, some copy and never really tried optimi optimizing it much. Uh, what's some of the low hanging fruit that you see often in your practice that a seller, an experienced seller can start improving upon? Where should they start paying attention to? What's the process like when you work with experienced sellers? Sure. So it could be as simple as just literally fixing up the images. Um, or even I have, I have someone who's selling, you don't understand thousands upon thousands a day. He has 30,000 reviews on his listing. Oh, wow. His images are, are bad. Like they're just the picture of product, no lifestyle images, no anything, but he's selling. Um, but it could be as simple as just adding keywords. It's so, even in the back end, um, a lot of times people underestimate it, but even putting words like, for example, in Spanish, a lot of people take water bottle or different things in Spanish and your competitors are not getting those sales. Those are all those sales that you can get and be found uh, when someone types in in Spanish. And it doesn't have to be in your front end. It can be in the back end. As long as you're found, you're indexed for that keyword, then you can get those sales. So it's, it could be as simple as putting keywords, fixing your images, but it, it could be really as simple as that. Yeah, people, you updated their thing. Within 24 hours, they just saw sales coming in, right? You know? And you said, uh, you mentioned that uh, the experienced seller has to fix the image. And what was wrong with the image? What's usually wrong? They just, meaning it's just very plain or simple or it's outdated, you know, people like the trend changes every single day. So it might've been awesome two years ago, but you need to be with it. You need it like, you know, vibrant colors or it depends on what the product is, but you need to stand out and you show why you're better than everyone else because every day there's a new competitor coming on. Right. And that's where uh, an expert like you yourself comes into play because uh, a seller can't just physically uh, monitor all the trends in product development and manufacturing and marketing and SEO. So yeah, I think that uh, surrounding yourself with experts like you is super important. Uh, I mean, again, uh, I mean, when we talk about blogging and content, for example, in blogs, the headline the subtitle, the image mix is like the holy trinity of a post success, right? So if, if you have a bad headline, nobody's probably going to read your post. Uh, so if the post is underperforming, it must be one of those. Uh, I mean, is it the same that comes to Amazon? Uh, are there any two or three things, uh, as you mentioned, that really a seller should focus on the 80% that can make or break a business? Or is it all balanced out? It's all balanced now, but like I mentioned before, and I can't stress it enough, the images and infographics are so, so, so important because people right. are pretty visual. You need to catch them. You know, it's not like, you know, they're going and they're, they're searching. So if someone stands a little bit more then they're just going to get the, you know, they're going to buy it from your competitor. So you need to be the one to stand out. So as you can see, I like standing out and that's what makes me like different than other people. And people see me from far, people see because that they relate it. So that's what I always compare it to. Like think outside the box. Offer something extra, for example, like people do eBooks and stuff like that. Um, as long as you're standing out and you know you relate to them, or whatever it is, you'll get the sale. What does a brand on Amazon consist besides listing optimization, in your opinion? Besides, I couldn't hear what you said. 
I'm sorry, uh, what does a brand on Amazon consist uh, besides listing optimization? What assets does a seller have to have in place uh, besides listing optimization? Having a quality product, very simple. A lot of people just buy something on Alibaba they don't like, or you know, they order one sample, it's good, and you just throw it up. It's not, it's not there's, there's two different ways to look at it. Some people just want to throw up a product, make their money and move on. And some people actually want to make a brand. So if you're someone who wants to actually make a brand on Amazon, very important to spend that extra month, even if it's going to be delayed, Spend an extra month, make sure your quality is well on your goods. You're going to start off with a boost and not tons of people just bashing your product with negative reviews. Right. So basically making a high quality product is the best marketing. And yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think that uh, the brand and like the process of building a brand is all about retention, right? It's all about whether customers are returning to you and, and building this relationship, building this reputation. But you mentioned reviews and I think that it's kind of like a catch 22 in the very beginning. Because uh, if you don't have sales, you don't have reviews. If you don't have reviews, you don't have sales. So what's the initial process of getting those first reviews would look like? It's, it's so hard. And it's like not one of the biggest questions again in the past like five years. This is true. So Amazon offers a program called Early Review Program, right? Right. Which is the same thing. Like either no one's buying your product. And then the few that they do, they're going to review. And most of the time, people are leaving negatives. Because when you get a product, like, for example, right? Are you right. like looking for, you're looking for the negatives rather than the positives. Right, 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 some right. Negative things that come to the mind, everyone's going to post, post, post. So what I built the past five years was my own focus group across America where people are regular shoppers and whatnot. And what they'll do is they'll purchase a product at Amazon and we'll give it away to them and they'll review the product. So if there's something oh. genuinely wrong with the product, they'll come back to us, they'll give you feedback so you can change it for the future. Um, and if it's good, they'll put a review on Amazon, they'll help you out and you know, you can go further. So just having that in place is such a you know big head start, um, especially on Amazon, because every minute, every day counts of you know when your listing is there or not. Absolutely, absolutely. And I like that you mentioned that where people leave only ne negative reviews because I'm embarrassed to admit, but I personally leave only negative reviews because if a product is good, I was like, oh, it's good, okay. And if, if, if there's something wrong, I just want to make them know, right? So I want to yeah. tell them that, guys, your product is wrong. So wow. you just end up having all these negative reviews. And yeah. And it's true. I mean, that's how I got introduced to the space. I never re like really realized someone brought to my attention, like, would you leave a review unless it's like, no, unless it's awesome, unless it's like really exceeded my expectations, then I'll leave a five star. But otherwise, we're looking for the negatives, you're just posting negative, negative, negative. And unfortunately, that's what it is. So you kind of have to fight against that. Right, right, right. And I mean, um, speaking of not just uh, listing optimizations and PPC, I'm always curious about how sellers build a brand outside of Amazon. So uh, whether they're using marketing inserts in their product, whether they're using email marketing, right? Uh, social media, blogs, landing pages, eBooks, as you mentioned. But I'm curious to know, uh, I mean, among the brands that you work with, uh, what does their general, uh, among experienced sellers, of course, what do their, uh, does their general marketing funnel look like? What assets do they have in place? So I always suggest someone building a brand outside of Amazon. People only rely on Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. But I have a question. Right. Let's, say you're, like, let's say your product goes down or something happens. You know what, you're gonna rely on Amazon? You can just do that. Amazon is a great platform, an awesome platform to help you boost sales and you know, to actually get you started. But it's very important to also focus outside of Amazon. Getting those sales, first of all, there's no fees, you know, like right. Amazon's taking, but Amazon's great. So yeah, doing product inserts or outside traffic, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, those kind of stuff like influencers and kind of guiding them, creating brand awareness of your brand itself so that when someone wants to purchase it, it's not only Amazon, you're not only found on Amazon. You also have an online presence where people could, you know, purchase and relate to and kind of get your, your brand name out there. Yeah, but should you sell through Shopify or Instagram or just use them for brand awareness? You could do both. You could do both. I mean, a lot of people, what I see is they, they, they mix the both. They create a Shopify site, but they direct them to purchase it on Amazon because no, one, no one's going to ship out like products themselves. Not everyone wants to do that. Everyone just sends it to Amazon and just gets it going. But so what a lot of people do is, They'll create the Shopify site, they'll create the traffic because you can do a lot more advertising and whatnot. And then they'll have them check out through Amazon and then they'll fulfill the order. So, you know, they're kind of getting a win-win over there. Yeah, right, right, right. And is it, is it correct to say that uh, most beginning sellers 
focus only on Amazon to gain this initial traction. And then once they scale, they diversify into other marketplaces like Walmart, uh, eBay, Etsy, and uh, build their own assets. So is Amazon this entry point for most sellers as you see? Yeah, from definitely. Because it's easier to get started. Um, you know, it, it, yeah, definitely. You see a lot of people doing that. Some people do the opposite. Um, you know, they already have an on online presence and whatnot. And like, oh, let's also sell on Amazon. But nowadays, people just put something on, uh, up on Amazon. If it's successful and whatnot, then they'll bring, build a brand around that. Right, right, right. And uh, we actually had um, one of the uh, management, uh, one of the persons from the management team at Empire Flippers come to the show, and he mentioned that. Uh, Amazon is like e-commerce on training wheels, which I liked. And I really think that, uh, I mean, Amazon just created this huge opportunity for new entrepreneurs who many of them didn't even have any entrepreneurial experience before that, right? And they're just coming to Amazon. They're building this business from scratch. And some of them are very successful. So yeah, I mean, as you said, I think Amazon is a great entry if you're into e-commerce. But when you get to a point where you can diversify, you should definitely diversify Definitely. Yeah, sure. hundred percent. Sure. And uh, speaking of the diversification, uh, I mean, uh, from, from, from what I see, there are several kinds of sellers, sellers who do everything themselves and sellers who outsource everything. Right. And I, I'm curious to know at what point should a seller outsource their listing optimization to a company like yours? So I always say it's, it's best to focus where you're good at. Instead of spreading yourself thin and trying to, you know, source the product, get the product, then, you know, do the branding, do the designing and all that kind of stuff. It's best just to source it out because the time that you're saving, you're just going to save all that money. Instead of spending yourself too thin, you're having 20%, just focus 100% on what you're good at and let someone else handle the rest. Yeah, but should you do that at the very beginning or is it like a function of revenue, size, product lines when you I should mean, diversify? I would say it's based off you. I mean, if you're, if you're just starting out, then no, don't, you know, don't pay someone to do stuff for you because that's money you could be investing in other places. But if you're already getting experience and you have some extra budget, definitely worth to invest it for other people to help you out. So, you know, you can have more time to focus on what you're good at and what you need to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I mean, t time is money, as they say in retail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I mean, what tools uh, besides the Amazon ad console uh, can a seller use to help them manage their listings, improve photography, find the right keywords, maybe some of the tools that you're using at your agency that uh, sellers can try themselves. There's so many different tools out there, like really so many different tools. Uh, Viralunch has a great tool where, you know, they could, they could inspect your listing, look at it, give you suggestions. Um, trying to think of others. Helium 10 is a very famous tool that, you know, people get started with. Uh, each, you know, each, each um, software has its pros and cons, but essentially they're all good. Okay. I have one last question for you before we wrap up because uh, we, try to keep these interviews short and meaty so that sellers can wrap their hand around the content. Uh, it's a question from Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One. Uh, what is your contrarian view that goes against the commonly accepted notions in the industry? Basically, what truth do very few people agree with you on? Okay, I, I think people just underestimate either how hard or easy it can be just to put something up on Amazon as long as you're putting the right focus and effort into it. I think, you know, you could actually build a sustainable business off of that. A lot of people just think it's hard. Uh, a second thing is, I know a lot of people won't say this, but I will. Um, never pay for a course on Amazon. I mean, 95 <laughs> I, I know, and I don't even sell courses myself because if you really want like good value in something, it's not always by paying for something. And I, I've tried it out myself. We're just buying other people's courses where they give me like two years, you know, everyday Amazon changes, just two years ago, outdated stuff. It don't make sense and you can't build a business off of that. And there are many people who call me literally crying and saying, I just, I, you know, I saved up $5,000. And I just like, everyone was talking about this course. I paid my $5,000 because I thought I'm going to get a good head start. And now he's back to where we started. And just a quick point of buying more, you know, so that's what I always say. Like people ask me, how can I get started on Amazon? What can I do? You know, I say, just don't buy a course. Like there's tons of awesome information on YouTube um, that you'll learn for free and stuff like that. And, you know, I just wouldn't suggest buying a course. I mean, there are a lot out there. So don't get me wrong, I want people to come for me. There are many, many great and, you know, useful courses out there and some that I would even suggest. But the market is just so around themselves that, you know, you just go on YouTube and you see this people with the cars in the background, all that kind of stuff, and people just get fooled by it. And I just don't want more people to get fooled by it. So that, that's my suggestion. 
many people won't agree with me on it, but you know, I've seen enough to, to warn other people that not everything is going, you know, just having to pay for it, all these courses and stuff like that. Now, Mark, thanks for your honesty, because I, I actually, uh, what I love about this last question uh, is that uh, you get the most interesting answers, because almost every uh, agency founder or, or an entrepreneur has something that they believe to be contrarian, and they basically build, they usually build their whole business on top of it. And um, as far as I know, Peter Thiel himself, in the book Zero to One, that was a contrarian question that every entrepreneur should ask themselves before they build a business and they should base their own business on it. And uh, I mean, I love that you mentioned um, about Amazon because really a lot of people are asking questions, is it too late to get into Amazon 2020? And I mean, the obvious answer is no, if you're serious about it, right? I mean, if you're serious, if you're dedicated to it, it is kind of late to make the quick book. That, bo that boat has sailed, right? Like long ago. But I mean, like as with anything, it, it, yeah. it, the rules of physics don't change. Distribution does change. As long as you have the right strategy and you know what you're doing, then go for it. But if you just say, I'm going to find something from China and pop it online and hope for the best, absolutely not. If you have a good strategy, you know what you're going, you have a plan, uh, you know, this month I'm going to do like all that kind of stuff, then definitely it's worth it. As long as you're standing out, you have a strategy, then you will sell well, definitely. Right. And because a lot of people go on YouTube and they just see all the all this content that was created years ago when people are talking about, let's do retail arbitrage. And, and most of that shipping, doesn't work. It, it becomes a trend. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone, everyone knows that dropshipping is not allowed by Amazon. So that was yeah. another thing that through a course, everyone was selling dropshipping on Amazon. Tons of people got suspended for that and had money locked up inside and all that kind of stuff. Just because like people actually put the full trust in all these people and like, oh, we're going to buy a course. Right. But like, no one knows to even do the research that you can be drop ship on Amazon. Yeah, right. And, and I mean, the funny thing with courses is that, uh, unfortunately, there's so many people in the space who teach without really having any relevant experience, not even like the slightest uh, experience of selling on Amazon themselves, right? So it seems to me that uh, the Amazon space, because it's a very... Uh, competitive market and uh, basically saturated market. There are a lot of teaching and content that that's growing on top of it that you have to be really careful when you uh, look for information to educate yourself. Exactly. That's why when, oh, sorry, Ziggy, that's why, like, even when you ask me, you ask me, do you do PPC? I say, I don't. I mainly focus on what I'm good at and I know that there's Amazon such a huge world. PPC, it's its own world in itself. So I like focusing on the marketing that's you know, kind of aspect of it just because I know that's what I'm good at. And that's the more, you know, I can get more, most information for spending myself thing. Absolutely. And everybody's going to win from that because a seller can outsource their listing optimization to you, basically trusting you that you are good at SEO and someone else uh, PPC. Uh, but I mean, Mark, thanks a lot for this. Where can people learn more about you and your business? So my, yeah, my website, markksdseo.com. Got a lot of information on there. Actually, right now, I'm a little updating our website, but it uh, should be up soon and uh, very updated and a lot of information there. Awesome. Thanks so much for this. Hopefully sure. talk to you soon. Yeah, sounds good. My pleasure.